Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, we were discussing uh, the criteria of, of uh, libas of the masalli, so the clothes that uh, one wears when praying. Can one actually pray with clothes that are made from dead animal skin or dead animal fur? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin We've mentioned two criteria in the beginning of the previous um, episode which was to do with the tahara and the purity of the clothes which was the first criteria that we have to make sure that um, the clothes of the musalli of the one who wants to pray before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the clothes must be pure and tahir and the second one to be permissible not to be usurped and we spoke about the masail with this regard now we move to the masail you mentioned and that is not made of meter or dead animal corpse um, yes we're not allowed to use or wear the clothes which were made from uh, the skin of the dead animals even if, if it was let's say the sheep or the cow skin, skin which died as a result of natural death or was killed not in the way of the sharia and halal way um, also the Sayyid says that it is as per obligatory precaution احتياط wujubi, that we also avoid wearing um, the mater and the that dead corpse of the animals which have cold blood as well so let's say um, the snake's skin for example or crocodile skin or even fish let's say whale skin uh, which they die natural death for example or being killed um, now we cannot wear them in the salah so in this case we cannot use them um, in the salah itself and uh, be it a, a, a cold blood or hot blood animal in any way with regard to the musalli again for using um, the halal meat animal which has non-living um, parts let's say the hair, the fur, um, the wool so let's say if you find a dead sheep or camel or cow or even the feathers of let's say the, chick the chicken and so forth and you wanted to take them uh, these parts of the animal which have non-living as they say you know the fur, the wool you can actually take them off from the dead animal and you make out of them what? clothing, garments, mm -hmm. trousers and everything and you can wear them in the salah because we have been using these clothes um, we've been buying, for example, uh, t-shirts, shirts, suits made in, for example, China, which yes. is a non-Muslim country. So these parts of the uh, animals uh, which are made uh, from uh, and the animals were killed not in the way of halal way, for example, we can actually use them. That's fine. There's no problem with it because they don't actually represent a living part of the animal, like the skin, for example. Mm -hmm. So we can actually use the wool uh, the fur, uh, the feathers, for example, and such like uh, to make clothes, even if the animal was uh, a dead corpse, for example. That's fine. What about animals which their meat is haram for us to eat? For example, a tiger or a lion or a, a bear. Um, are we allowed to use the, those sort of um, fur and skin for salah? Again, with regard to the haram meat animals, such as the cat, the tigers you mentioned, lion, and, so, and such like, any parts of their body, uh, even the hair, the stand hair, if that was on your body, uh, the salah would be batil and void. Okay. So you have to make sure that you don't wear any kind of um, um, the skin or, or the fur or the wool of, of haram animals on your body. And anyhow, we have to remove them, especially those who have cats at home, for example. They have to make sure that when they carry the cat, they remove all the hairs attached to their body and clothes mm -hmm. before they actually uh, start praying. 
that's the important issue here. And again, let's bring this issue up as well with regard to the doubts of the ones who have the doubts that whether <coughs> um, this garment or clothes or shirt or suit, is it made from a haram meat animal, for example, or halal meat animal? And um, unsure about it, you know, the, the hair, the wool, and so forth. Can I actually use it? Because as I've mentioned that the basis and the qaida was that, you know, everything is halal until you're sure it's, 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 it's haram or um, everything is tahir until you're sure that and certain it's najis. In this case, it's permissible for you and for the one to wear these jackets, for example, leather jackets that you don't know if it's made from animal, mm -hmm. haram animal or industrial skin, for example, leather and so forth, you're allowed to wear them, whether it's made in Muslim or non-Muslim countries, that, that's fine. As far as you don't know, you have doubts about the origination of these um, skins, you know, are, 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 is it even from um, a Muslim or non-Muslim country? So that's fine with this regard. Shaykhna, what is the rule in regards to gold or silver uh, and also silk for a man to wear during Salah? With regard to the gold, let's come to the gold first. For the men, it is not allowed for them, number one, to wear the gold in any how, mm -hmm. in their hands as, as an ornament, jewelry, or to wear the gold in the means of um, clothing, you know, the threads to be the gold, made from the gold. Um, or the buttons are gold, golden buttons, for, for example. So that by itself is forbidden not allowed. And on top of that, it becomes haram and void. If you wear them in the salah, it will make the salah invalid and batil. So there's two issues here with regard to the gold. But there's no objection for the sisters and for the ladies to wear gold in the prayer. As I mentioned previously, that it is mustahab for the woman to wear uh, the jewelry, uh, the necklace and so forth in the salah, the, the, the beauty in the salah. That's fine. That's mustahab. Even so, that's with regard to uh, the gold issue uh, that is haram on the men to wear it, be it uh, to wear it outside the salah or inside the salah. Um, with regard to the silk, now the silk for the men again, it's haram. We're not allowed to wear silk, be it outside the salah or inside the salah. Okay. Inside the salah, it will make the salah void and batil. And um, with regard to um, wearing the silk for women, again, they're allowed to wear it in the salah as they are allowed to wear it outside the salah. The condition is different and the terms are different from men and women with this regard. Um, what if the silk garment isn't 100% silk? In the West we have, especially when it comes to ties and things like that and, and uh, handkerchiefs, they'll have silk but it'll be 30% silk, 50% silk. Is this considered to be the same as silk and has the same ahkam rule, or is it different? Well, if it's something like the handkerchiefs and something that doesn't really represent um, the libas al musalli, as I've mentioned, as a full garment, in this case, it doesn't invalidate the salah. Okay. The salah will be accepted um, as far as just is just a. Um, small piece of, let's say, handkerchief or anything like that doesn't represent um, um, the libas of the musalli, the clothes of the musalli, and be it a full silk, that's fine, pure silk, that's fine. So that's so. So what's what doesn't represent? So can we get we can get away with the handkerchief? What about a scarf? Is that okay? Or that's no, that that represents a libas. That could represent libas. I mean, it, you have to see if something can cover actually the body okay, part of okay, the body that's, that's, uh, represents the body then uh, as a cover for the body then that becomes uh, uh, the salah thank imbalance. you for clarifying that yep. thank you thank you so Shaykhna, what about if i have um, a bandage or some sort of uh, cast made from silk is is that okay to pray in or does it have to be removed no that's fine that's not counted as wearing uh, that, that bandage or, or, or that 
um, plaster and, and so forth. So you can have actually uh, a bandage with, with silk, uh, uh, which is um, to do with uh, covering the, the, the wounds on the skin. Uh, even if it was made from the pure silk, that's fine. And Sheikh, what happens if I have prayed Salah and I was wearing pure silk? Um, what would happen if I didn't know that this was made from pure silk? What would happen if I knew I was wearing pure silk, I can't pray in this, and then I forgot that I was wearing it and I prayed, and then I remembered after my prayer, oh, this was silk, I'm not allowed to pray with this. You see, um, if somebody prays while wearing pure silk and he didn't know, he was jahil, he was ignorant, or he forget, he forget to actually take off and pray. Uh, what the Sayyid says, the Sayyid differentiates between the Qasr and the Muqasr. The Qasr is somebody who never knew about it. He completely never knew about that this was silk and he prayed with it. The Muqassr is the one who, he knows that there's something called silk around and he should ask. He didn't ask, he didn't search. He just went and prayed. So he knows that he should have been asked somebody or, or the alim or whoever else to ask about the masala. He didn't ask. Then uh, he says that it's, um, as precaution, the uh, is batil is void. But if it was just a, uh, being unaware, jahil, and ignorant about it in overall, he never knew about it. Then in this case, uh, the fatwa is that uh, there's no requirement to repeat the salah. It's correct. Uh, although it's ahwat or it's precaution, it's better than to repeat the salah. It's better, but otherwise, as a fatwa, you know, uh, the salah is accepted and is, is valid. Shaykh, now what about if I have uh, what we call janamaz or masallah uh, and sometimes we have nice luxurious ones made of you know quite nice materials if that is made from silk or has silk in it is that okay? Well because the, these things are not part of the libas al musalli mm -hmm. you know you're not going to wear them you're going to pray on them or you're going to cover yourselves as, as, a, as a blanket for example um, so to pray on a janamaz or the pray mat made of, out of silk, um, there's no objection for that. That's fine. You can actually pray on them. Uh, and the salah is valid. Asan Sheikh, thank you very much. And thank you to all the viewers who have joined us on the first season of Ahkam SOS. I hope it was very informative for you. And inshallah, we'll be back in Ramadan for a Ramadan special of Ahkam SOS discussing uh, Ahkam in regards to fasting and in regards to the holy month of Ramadan. If you have any questions in regards to this special month and in regards to fasting, please contact us on the contact details provided and inshallah the Sheikh and I will be able to address them and give you your answers. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.